necessitates us to do all we can. $500 billion in loans to distressed companies, $350 billion in loans for small businesses, $250 billion direct payments to individuals and families, money for unemployment insurance benefits. A Senate vote is expected today with House action later on, potentially a unanimous consensus of members won't have to return. I'm Michael Toscano. As the deal on the stimulus legislation moved toward completion, an optimistic Wall Street was registering major gains yesterday. As Steve Kastenbaum tells us from New York. When the closing bell rang, the Dow was up 2,113 points, or 11.4%. It was the largest single-day gain since 1933. The S&P 500 rose 9.4%, its best day in 12 years, and the Nasdaq closed up 8.1%. That said, global markets higher today with U.S. stock futures showing more gains overnight. The Dow up by about 3% now. The Nasdaq and the S&P fired by, fought higher by 1.5%. A major lockdown in the United Kingdom couldn't prevent Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth's son, and the first in line to the British throne from testing positive for coronavirus and now self-isolating in Scotland. India, the world's largest democracy, now under lockdown with 1.3 billion people ordered to stay home. I'm Michael Toscano. Family is the bigger one. We're family owned, family operated, family managed. That means legacy. That means dependability. That means using Granger. With over 1.5 million products and knowledgeable product experts, Granger has whatever we need. And with same day pickup and next day delivery options, they have it whenever we need them. For over 90 years, businesses like ours have trusted Granger. Because, like family, Granger's got our back. Call and click Granger.com. All right. I need the entire plane. Hello, win at the $600,000 a year with the 20 years of cash instant tickets. Huh? Microphone check. One, two, what is this? People say this is serious business. It's your man, Mace Jack, and I got to get this. Oh my God, and I cannot take this. I'm doing it. Take a moment, share the broadcast. What's up, IG? Y'all rocking with your man live in the building. What's up, Facebook? How y'all feeling? All right, so we got this thing cracking. Doing our thug thistle. IG, who's rocking with me? What up? Pastor, brother, Edward Anderson. What's up, Mob? How you feeling this morning? What you doing up? How is it down in Jacksonville? Y'all staying safe and in the building? Visit AccountTemps.com. AccountTemps, a Robert Half company. WVON, traffic and weather, now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 25th. Alert of the 
Why is everything so loud? So you'll be you'll be in the camera until Ty comes. What up, y'all? Let's get this shit going. What's up, Instagram? Wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more back. What's the how y'all feeling this morning? What's up, y'all? Let's get this thing going. What's up, Terrell? What's up? Who is that? Dirty Skate for Life. What up, JBA Rights? Let's get this thing cracking. Oh, ho. Yes, I will do stories. Instagram, share me, share me, share me. I might make this with YouTube in a minute. Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the WBOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson, and I don't have a co-host. Uh, Todd Stroger is having some coronavirus hiccups. I think his alarm got the coronavirus. And so now they're trying to figure out who's going to punch the keys to turn it off because nobody wants to catch the V. So I guess we'll be waiting on Todd in a minute. But hey, that's okay because we can get this thing. We'll sit on the tarmac. How long do we sit on the tarmac waiting for Todd? You know what? You know what? It is a soul play. You know, we do take off on time pretty much on time. So we're going we gonna to do... Uh, Instead of uh, CP time, we're going to leave on TP time. That, well, well, what would the P be for in Todd? Oh, Todd's presidential. Okay, so instead of CP time, we on TP time. That's what I like about you. You know, Sonya, maybe we'll bring you in the studio. Maybe you sit in the chair and we put Todd on the, on, on the, Todd on the board. So you know what, but that's okay. This is the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson, uh, waiting on my co-host. In the meantime, got to say what's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson, who's in the newsroom. Jennifer, how you feeling this morning? I am blessed on this morning. I am doing very well, Maze. Awesome, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Well, that is Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom. And you know that other lovely voice I heard, you heard in the background who is actually starring with me now. You know what, Sonya? I think the way we're going to do this on Facebook Live is you're just going to be my co-host on Facebook Live and we'll let Todd, you know, Todd will get a guest appearance. How's that? Okay. <laughs> you like, okay. See how they do you? You're forcing me, kid. <laughs> I would tell you, boy, it is no loyalty in this industry. They be like, yo, spot up? Oh, I'll take your spot. I will take your spot, no thought. That's all right, though, because Sonia Escobar, there would be nobody better to be in the spot. You know what? You can't leave, though, because you are the musical conductor, and you, your music is just always so right on time. But since we're not going to be leaving on time, let me do this. Let me jump to some of the headlines really quickly. Uh, how about this one? The president says, y'all going y'all buzz back to work by Easter. He don't care how many y'all got to die. And, um... It seems like the pres. Uh, the, did you hear the pres? The, the governor of Texas, like I'm seventy and I sacrifice. I know and I huh. Speak for yourself. 
Se I feel like 70 is the new 50. What y'all talking about? I'm trying to live. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get 70 to be like, you know, when you was 40 back in the day. Remember how they used to be like, 20 is the new, 30 is the new 20? Then it keep, every time I hit a new break, like when I, I'm about to be 50. So 50 is about to be the new 30. I'm taking 20 off everywhere we go. So look, Mr. Texas, I, 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 I know everybody want to go on the Easter egg hunts. I know everybody wants to play outside. I'm telling you, I be looking at the window outside like, dang, I wish. I Remember when the kids used to be like, can I go and play? Can I go out and play? It feel like you're on punishment. Did you get grounded or were you on punishment? White people, when I, you know what? I used to be on punishment in Chicago. When I moved to Bolingbrook, I got grounded. Okay, I know that's a little squirrel, but do white people? I got whooped. Oh, that's the worst. You get a whooping and punishment? Uh, uh, man, I used to get... Uh, oh, oh, chat. You know what? Sonya, we might have to have abuse call. We might have to have an abuse session. Because you got the cord, too. I got the cord, the leash, the... You name it, boy. I, you know what I'm going to tell you what, though? Kids are lucky today that they don't get whoopings. Because with all the kids staying home, I have learned so much in the course of... You know, like when your kids go eight hours a day, you learn a lot when everybody's sitting in the house. And can I just tell y'all one more thing? I, I feel like this coronavirus is harder work than when I was just going doing things normal. You know why? Because I feel like I'm Hazel. I got to clean, cook. I got to make lunch because the kids is homeschooling. So I got to make them some lunch. I got to cook everybody's dinner. And by the time, I, you know what? I have a newfound respect for housewives. I do. Because y'all put in a lot of work during the day. Now, y'all know I don't have a clock in here, right? So, because I don't have a clock in here. ding a ling a ling a ling a ling uh, You're going to have to keep me up, up to date because, you know, I don't know how to watch the clock. All right, y'all. So, let me go to some of these headlines. So, like I said, President Trump wants everybody back to normal by Easter, he's saying. Now, Anthony uh, the Fauci. He's saying, uh, he ain't saying nothing. He don't want no parts of the president's predictions because he like, when you see what is going on in New York City, you're not going to say that. And apparently they said, if you have been in New York over the last two weeks, you officially have the disease. Like, don't even, like the whole city of New York should be quarantined. This is crazy, y'all. I think, though, the thing that makes me so nervous about it all is that they keep making it seem like if you get it, you're going to die. And that's not necessarily the case if you have pre-existing health conditions but it doesn't mean like it's an automatic death sentence i almost feel like they're making this like okay so i, I don't want to do not de to downplay the seriousness but i am concerned like i feel like if you catch it it's like you got aids right like the way they're doing it like oh my god you're gonna get this First of all, AIDS is AIDS to me. I don't care when you got it. If you got it, you got it. Tiger blood. Tiger blood. <laughs> okay, tiger blood. I hear you. Tell that to your tell that to your fiance. Right? I got tiger blood mixed with a little AIDS, but it's all good. It's all good. All right. No, and I don't want to make fun of anybody for that. But I am I wanna temper. I just want to make sure people know that just because you get it, I'm not telling you not to be concerned, but it is not an automatic death sentence. Is that fair to say? And in that process, I'm trying to figure out how to manage my life because it's like when this stuff first happened, did y'all look outside and it was like always gloomy? I told you it made me feel like if I walked outside, I could potentially get it just by being there. And so I, 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 I want to make sure, I, I do, I'm starting to get why people are upset with the mixed messages, but I also just don't know where, which way to go. I, okay. I really don't know which way to go. All right. So I, well, I, and you know, have you noticed that Anthony Fauci has not been to press conferences? It's like, soon as, every time he, look, as soon as you contradict the president, your butt is gone. He was like, Anthony Fauci used to be up there. I, I also want to point out. Did anybody see the other day I was watching Fauci on stage and he took a pill while he was up there? I saw that and I was like, he got the cure and he ain't telling nobody. And he took it straight up on TV. And only like, about I posted and about 50 people was like, I saw that too. And people was like, he ain't got the cure. I was like, yeah, okay. Anthony Fauci up here like, I'm not standing around these clowns not about to get none. All right, let me move on. Uh, I, 
You know what? I'm going to talk about this after the break. I want to talk about Willie Wilson and the governor um, yesterday because I had I had a, an epiphany yesterday. And I'm going to talk to you about the epiphany. Um, it was almost like a pot calling the kettle black moment. And so, uh, instead of being petty maze, let's talk about how yesterday I was not petty maze, but I was save the lives of Illinoisans maze. Not save the lives of Illinoisans maze, but put people, I did what I've been preaching for everybody else to do yesterday. And I hope that we can get some solutions. Hey y'all, this is the WVON Morning Show. It looks like I am running right up against my break. So do this, we're gonna take a few minutes. We're gonna do some traffic and some weather. We're still sitting on the tarmac because of all people, guess who's late? Todd! And we'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WV. What's up, y'all? Take a moment, share the broadcast. What's up? Who is rocking with me? All right, first of all, let me start with my faithful family. What's up to everybody on Facebook? Look, guys, um, my sister has been telling me forever to go to Instagram. She said that there's a whole new audience there. So I'm going to start checking out Instagram. Um... I'm going to start checking out Instagram, right, and doing something there. Tanil was the first person to tell me. Uh, I do think I saw the power of it. I just haven't had the gumption. I need to really start stepping on my Instagram game anyway, which I plan to do. It's one of my goals over this time. How y'all feeling this morning? Is everybody all good? What's up? I'm going to say what's up to my Facebook Live audience who has been with me for years, and I hope y'all will stick with me. Hey, y'all. What up? Shout out to my man, Said J. Y'all check out Said J's page. Said has got a lot of, um, he's doing a coronavirus photo shoot before and after. And so he's got some really cool pictures. Like I took a picture in the middle of Madison. Uh, and then I took one behind the gate. And it's pretty funny. I think, I think Said might have took my, took my style and my idea. Because I seen Don doing my same poses. But it's all good. Check my man Said J out. I'm going to tell you that this coronavirus is aspiring all type of creativity from people and i'm really admiring how we're making this move to online the concern i have is will it decrease human interaction we're gonna talk about it instagram live y'all tell people what's up y'all share this okay what's up crystal rose what up gina is a name what up dj smooth G gina said fire tight dang gina you came in what's up gina what's in it for the black people y'all see it check it out y'all see it behind me bam I saw a couple of posts. People are really uh, upset with their employers and calling out their employers because they had to get their hours cut and set, but they still have jobs. I thought that was kind of insane. People need to reel that in on, on Facebook. Two people on my my Facebook feed or no. saw some crap like that. Also, you're talking about death sentence. You know, the, the killer thing about this is if you have to go to the hospital, become hospitalized, you're like total isolation. Total isolation from your family. You don't get to see nobody. Even if you're home, and that can be, you know, have a devastating effect on people. Mr. Yeah, I, that's why we're going to do a check-in today. Yeah, yeah. I, what I want to do today at 8 o'clock is really just tell people to call. Call in, tell us what you're doing, let us know you're okay, you're safe. Some I saw on Facebook yesterday somebody who I would never think was saying they were feeling isolated was like, I feel isolated. I've and, seen that too. And I, I, there are people, like, so it's, like, it's cool because my family is with me. Um, but I could see people getting, um, I could see people being, yeah. feeling isolated yeah. and feeling alone. And What's what up? you said about the creativity is kind of good too. Yeah. Willie, six minutes. So we get the, you know, the, how much of that do you want? Quite I a don't want a lot of it. I want maybe, um, I don't know why he didn't call me, blah, 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 something like that. Cause then I want to talk about how it extrapolated yesterday because there was a lot in there, and I feel like yesterday, so yesterday, I'm going to tell you, my plan was to take that, cut it, and then post it, and embarrass the governor, yeah. right? And be like, aha, I got your ass again. However, as I was going through it, and you know, Willie's like, I got where, and I was thinking about all this work I was about to put in to make them look crazy, instead of saying, how about I connect the dots? Yeah. And so instead of going all out and doing the whole thing, what I basically said was, hey, Dr. Wilson, I love my idea and I love my plan, but 
if I could get you and the governor together, could I get y'all together and would you not blast and figure out how y'all could work together? Really the same yeah. thing I've been saying about the Trump thing. Yeah. Right? Like, stop yelling, yeah, stop yeah, screaming, yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah, so um, I was leery, right, to even, because I don't, like, man, after they played me in the last election cycle, like, after, so basically, they, the governors and them took my economic, my black economic plan. Yeah. And used it like before, yeah. and Madigan and them said they couldn't hire me, right? Like so, they had we had had a whole, and Madigan basically told them they couldn't hire me, right? So they took my plan, yeah. And then the governor went around touting all of the things that I so said in the plan. Connect the dots. Yes. Yeah. That's the important thing. Yes. You so feel good about yourself too. No, well, you know, it depends on if they work it out. Yeah. Right, it's like it's funny because the thought was like, and I'm not tripping out at all. The thing was yesterday, Willie was like, "I sell gloves." It wasn't a donation, but I didn't expect it to be a donation. But you know, it's kind of no, like. Uh, but either way, he has access. It, like he manufactures either gloves. Either way, he has access. Exactly. Bottom line, and the governor says we'll pay a premium. And my thing is, he was like, "You don't got to pay a premium. Right. Just buy the gloves." Yeah. So we're back. Boom, 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 boom. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host. No, actually, I don't. My co-host, Sonia Escobar. You tune in to Facebook Live. Check us out on Instagram Live as well. We are doing our thing. You can go to WVON Facebook page. Hey, y'all. Every, you know what? Since you're sitting at home today, if you're in the house, instead of talking about us, instead of just listening, tune in. Watch us. Right? You know what? Stay tuned because you know we got Bond TV coming up as well. So y'all going to have a lot to do. A lot of programming right here because I'm inspired by the creativity. But hey, y'all. So you know what? Yesterday, um, we had Dr. the Reverend Dr. Willie Wilson on. And I'm going to tell you, when I left out of here, I was on fire. I was ready to tear the governor a new one because I just couldn't believe it. So, as a matter of fact, in case people didn't tune in yesterday, why don't we play a clip from the Reverend Dr. Willie Wilson, who was here with us yesterday. We, we even had these face masks uh, out here. We gave away, uh, the other day, a bit to 100000 to the fire and police department, mm. and 100000 should for next week for the uh, senior citizen. I know it was a giveaway. And and so now what we also, uh, we, we have put out the word a while back uh, in terms of the club. In the last, uh, I want to say last 30 days at least, we done brought in here in terms of the face mask of uh, about 20 or 30 million. Hold on, hold right? on. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Dr. Wilson, say that, repeat that, and then I need somebody to clip this. Because I want to be able to play it back 150 times. Dr. Wilson, you said you brought what into Illinois? Well, we, we brought them in here. We've been selling to our uh, a customer, not necessarily our customers. The other people now came on. They are my customer now. The hospitals and things like that. <clears throat> uh, we uh, about 30, 30 million. Now, next week, I got another 10 million huh? that is coming in. Dr. 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 Wilson, Dr. Wilson. So, some, okay, now I'm starting to think, my man who called here earlier with the trucks, right. Tim, who said that this is created and manufactured. Dr. Wilson, how are you telling us that there's that many that you are in control of, and how come I don't hear J.B. Pritzker or the mayor or anybody talking about you helping supply and fix this <coughs> situation? What? Why am I getting mixed messages? How you got $30 million and he asking the federal government for it? Are you... Are you Trying to sit? Are you trying to pimp the governor or something? Because he said he can't find him nowhere. Well, I don't. I don't know why. I sent a press release out the other day, and I mean nobody called me. But but let's put it this way: is that uh, I all gloves are made over in. I'm, I'm sorry, not gloves, face mask. But I do got gloves too. But face mask. 
the face mask in the United States and that face mask in China. Now, I, I source mine in a lot of other companies, too, from China. Stop. We get All right. So, if you all heard yesterday, the Reverend Dr. Willie Wilson, in case most people don't recognize, Dr. Wilson, uh, people think of him as the McDonald's guy, but Dr. Wilson has long since gone from McDonald's, and he has been uh, manufacturing medical supplies. Uh, when I was in Africa, uh, in Zimbabwe, they were using his gloves in sub-Saharan Africa for a lot of the AIDS cases and things that were happening. Um, Dr. Wilson sells uh, medical supplies. When I went to Costco a few weeks ago, Dr. Wilson, all, I picked up some rubber gloves before this thing happened, and they happened to be Dr. Wilson's rubber gloves. Uh, I got off the phone yesterday and went and talked to Dr. Wilson. Not went, but talked to him on the phone after we got out of here. And Dr. Wilson informed me that he has a warehouse in Woodfield with over 300,000 cases of gloves. Now, my instinct, and, and you know, I was, as I was thinking about this, I was like, man, this is the perfect example, the perfect opportunity to show that the governor is not doing what he's telling us, etc. You know, I was thinking, you know, I was feeling like I was going to send a mean tweet, except I was going to make it like a Facebook thing, and I was going to do, and then it's, I said to myself, self, you just got through talking about you not liking the approach that the governor took as related to saving lives in Illinois. So I, I called Dr. Wilson back after I had my master plan to blow it up, and I said, Dr. Wilson, before we blow this whole thing up, is it possible that I could maybe try to connect you and the governor's office together and maybe in the best interest of Illinoisans, we could get you guys to work together. Because here we got in Illinois, the governor's talking about trying to got people 24 hours a day trying to source gloves and medical supplies, not for now, but for the future, really. And here we have one of the largest distributors in the world in the state of Illinois, and nobody has called them. Now, I was under the impression yesterday that, that Dr. Wilson had co called the governor and the, on this issue, and the governor didn't respond. That's not actually what happened. What happened was he's been trying to talk to the governor since he became the governor. They didn't respond. And so yesterday, we put them together, uh, and by 3 o'clock, the two had talked on the phone. Now, I want to be clear. Dr. Wilson is a businessman. He sells gloves. They're buying gloves all over the world. So why not buy the gloves from Dr. Wilson, who just told me he's got a plane load of about 10 million masks coming on a plane from China next week. So instead of creating or expanding the problem in a time of crisis, ideally we saw the opportunity for people to work together. So it is my sincere desire and, and as much as I have issues politically, the lives of the citizens of Illinois are more important. And so I am super excited that Governor J.B. Pritzker picked up the telephone and actually called Dr. Wilson and now put him in contact with the emergency management that has the ability to do this. And look, y'all, we can work together and we can be part of the solution. Um, I didn't ask for Dr. Wilson to donate the gloves because he's they, they're selling them all around the world at a premium. But he wants to save lives in Illinois too. So yeah, I'm gonna tell you what, right here on the WVOM morning show, black people were part of the solution or are part of the solution. I want to send a big shout out to Chad Hoosier and to Sean Repellier, who all got together. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, y'all, we haven't really talked in years. Right? But it was important, and it was great to see everybody drop their flags and work for the benefit of Illinois, y'all. I think we're going to figure out a way. It's not a maze thing. It's a Illinois thing. And I'm super excited that instead of politics, we were able to put the people first. Hey, y'all, this is a WVON morning show. It's like I'm still trying. Wait a minute. See, and then this, this is what kills me. How you gonna be late for the flight, then be lollygagging in the lobby, talking about, oh, you wanna talk about, hey, everybody, hey, hey, we trying to do a morning show here, we trying to get the plane off, everybody's sitting on the plane, and this dude is getting ready to come in with a pack of McDonald's, like, oh, are you waiting on me? Hey, y'all, it's the WVO in Morning Show. Hopefully, when we get back, Ty Strokes will be here, and the social media question of the day.
Live from the WBON Newsroom, here's our news. So y'all, it is my sincere hope that they could work it out. Now, I, I'm not going to get into the details, but I, sometimes I wish I could be the negotiator and put people together. It's like, I don't know, maybe I'm such a volatile person. Oh, look, y'all, he want to show up for the show now. What's up, Gina? What up, Raheem Say? What up, Virtuous? What up, Miss Azure? Tanisha? Oh, now Todd want to come to the show, y'all. He want to act like, like, right. How much, how much a minute? Like, it's only 10 people on the plane, and he won't be like, <laughs> we can't even fill up the plane, no one. I ain't gonna come in the plane, right? Smelling like barbecue chicken wings. <laughs> you know, I used to love doing that though. Get on the plane and smoke and funk up the whole plane. Ty gonna spray the alcohol inside of the microphone, destroy, because it's water in there too, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. it is. How you gonna push your funkified stuff on my stuff? Is all sanitized. You gonna put come in here uh, late, sanitizing, then wanna put it on. Man, see, that's black people right there. That yeah. is, Ty just came in with the epitome of blackness. That may be true, yeah. That was. <laughs> like, I, I need to get my stuff together, so I'm going to just mess your shit up. I don't, unlike Maze, I don't believe in saying all bad things are black. I love black cats. Uh, black people. That's the problem. You like one of them Peter people. I love the animals better than the people. <laughs> They're so good. I love the animals. Yeah. yeah animals, animals. I just Todd cleaning up so y'all can see Todd in his XU. Todd is the person that's out infecting everybody. I was watching. He out telling people he just going everywhere, touching things, just uh, being like. I only go to the grocery store. No, you went to the hardware store. Well, that too. That's the same thing. No, it's not. The hardware store is actually better than the grocery store. Because people don't go to the hardware store. They don't think about it. They no, everybody's have. doing the hardware store right now because, in my estimation, they're doing their home projects. All right, y'all, take a moment. Share the broadcast. broadcast. Yes, that is definitely Nakers. You know how Nakers do. Nakers will do you bad all the time. Y'all take a moment share the broadcast. The bad part is I've been up for ages. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know what time it was. And my cat has become unreliable. Your you know, cat, like everybody home, I don't understand what the hell is going on here. I think we've thrown him off. You <laughs> are. He like, you leave at this. He know what time he got the crib to himself, and y'all ain't giving him the crib to himself no more. He eventually came up. He was like, what's up, man? What time is it? He was like, you got to come. <laughs> <laughs> See, so Todd told a lie. He said it was an alarm issue. It was, he was late. You ever had somebody in the pulpit and they think they talk, and the preacher, think, you think he talk about you? I've been feeling like that lately. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, your shit is going to be fucked up in about just about. <laughs> that computer ain't going to last much longer either. <laughs> Mitch, it'll last forever. You know what? I wish I could have just drove. T you see, they won't let you just drive to the beach. I and just stay. They like if you got a beach home, you can't come to your joint right now. What? What do you mean, like? <laughs> like people who are off Michigan work. Like they like if you live in a resort town, they like don't come. Really? Yes. If you got a second home, I will. I wish a mother. I wish a mug would. I guess they figure it's contagious. We don't want you here. You're gonna be going somewhere eventually. Yeah, they would be like, you probably gonna be like tired touching everything. <laughs> Todd, 
Gold Rush. All right, y'all, take a moment to share the broadcast. Instagrammers, y'all not paying attention. That's okay. Right, the Gold Rush went to the, uh, what would be the, uh, well, they, I guess they didn't go, but they were going to go to what would be the uh, March Madness tournament for the NAIA. Go! Oh, the kids, the fake version. Unfortunately, they can't go. Kansas City. Repaired this. What a world. This girl is half his age. Don't stand, don't stand so, don't, don't stand, stand so close, close to me. Okay. Don't stand, don't stand, don't stand so close to me. When I'm so jealous, you know how that girls get. Sometimes it's not so easy. To be the teacher's pet, temptation, frustration. Sometimes it makes him cry. Ooh, yeah. see he's waiting. His car is warm and dry. Don't stand, don't stand so, don't stand so close to me. Don't stand, don't stand so, don't stand so close to me. What up, sister on the wall? Come words in the stack room, the accusation. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 16 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co host, Sonia Escobar. And bringing up the rear, it. <laughs> I don't mind being on the back of the train as long as I'm on. <laughs> Bringing up the rear is our friend Taj <laughs> I crack myself up. Hey, y'all, this is the WBON Morning Show. It seems like finally we are here, Todd. The pl- Todd, you made it, man. What? What's the deal, yes, man? Yes, yes. You know what? You ever seen somebody late and then nonchalant when they late? Like, everybody's sitting there waiting. Like, he, like we all running around trying to get off the tarmac. We've been sitting here for 30 minutes. Ty, Ty, stop, talk to everybody. Hey, how you doing? Walking slow. Hey, guys, what's going on? Meanwhile, we all sitting right here waiting <laughs> to take off. Ty, what, what's the deal, man? Well, I think I'm going to have to start sleeping with my phone. My watch didn't work today. But I was sitting uh, in the bed. You know, I don't want to wake my wife up because she wakes up like if I turn left. So I'm always trying not to wake her up. But... Today I should have been like, what the hell's going on here? Something just doesn't feel right. Really? Todd. Okay. So you what? just so and, Oh, and the cat didn't work today. He was I mean he came. He's the one who actually got me out of bed. I was like He like, what you doing, Doc? He yeah, like, hey man, he like, that's my spot. You he, I, he like I got shows to watch. <laughs> I'm trying to watch the WVON morning show on Facebook Live. And you still in the bed. Ain't you supposed to be on the show? No, he was sick saying, you know, you feed me in the morning, right? <laughs> and th- something's not right. <laughs> I was like, I said, what's wrong? T- maze in the well? Oh, my goodness. All right, y'all. It's Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd. All right. It's time for the social. Oh, well, you know what? Now that you're here, man, we can get this thing up, up, up and away. Up, Let's up get this thing away. up to... 50,000 feet. This is the WVON Morning Show. I skipped over the headlines, Todd, but I'm going to push those back uh, for you uh, until we come back from uh, like a little bit later on today. You know what I mean? We'll do them a little bit later. All right. All right. All right, but it's time for the social media question of the day, Todd. The social media question of the day. Um, 
So yesterday the president said that he wants to get people back in the economy working back by Easter. Um, people are screaming on social media. JB said you cannot, he apologizes for what's happening, but you cannot have a life without a livelihood without a life. But the fact of the matter is, Todd, I'm going to tell you. I'm you got a point. Being dead is dead. I, I have never been dead, but I'm pretty sure it's final. You know, but I'll tell you one of the things that's tough. Um, one of the things that's tough is, Todd, is as this thing is going on, can I tell you the phones are ringing? There are businesses that will not come back. And even as people are buying and shopping and selling like there's no tomorrow, like they're ordering things and saying hey and buying and offering to buy all these things. Yeah, hey, I, I told you I've been in the grocery store like five days in a row, and it's always crowded. There's always people looking for, well, they're always looking for toilet paper and water. Well, I'm gonna tell you, Todd. My biggest fear is not running out of toilet paper or water. It's running out of money. It really is. It's like I, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. So if I don't work, I don't eat. I get and all my clients. I don't have a big cushy job. I am the job. And so even as they're saying, no, you won't work without, a, I mean, no livelihood, no life. I guess one of the things that is really driving people to try to work is because they have bills and things to pay. Right? Like, I still got to pay rent. I still got to pay um, for car notes, house notes, etc. Right? Like, I'm literally tired. And, you know, I got a little reserve. You know what I'm saying? I got some savings. So I can make it. A little while. But I'm already anticipating what happens and how do I rebuild my business. I get that. And I want to do something about it. And I, and, and I think that the thing that's driving a lot of people to not stay home besides being stir crazy, Todd, is they got to work. They're worried about not being able to pay their bills. Think about when they say $400 is a difference for a lot of people. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. If you don't have, you can't make a $400 emergency, what happens when you don't have a paycheck or your clients don't pay for two months or three months? So I want to ask the social media question of the day. Does the need to work outweigh coronavirus safety concerns. See, I think it's easy as a multi-billionaire to say, ah, oh, yeah, you know, live little. It's easy. But for some people, Todd, it's hard to survive. Like I don't I don't get government assistance. Don't even know how. Right? Um, I don't know if I'm a fit in the small business them recovering because of the type of business I do. Right? Right. And so Todd Think about if you have never gotten government assistance, if you have not, how do you, how do you prepare for the future? And I think that when I think of old black folks that are still trying to go out and go to work and find something to do, I think it's because they got bills to pay. And I don't think that right now there is an answer to the bills being paid. And so everybody knows, like, you know how I was saying, when you turn on the switch and it's like, and everything starts coming back on. You know how that happens when your power goes out in the house? Yeah. The key becomes when you come back and you don't have the same revenue stream that you had when you went out. Because nobody's saying you don't have to pay your bills. They're saying we're just not going to charge you for them right now. And even as everybody is home, right, more bills... Even as everyone is home, more bills are compiled. So now I got four people in the house using electricity all day, water all day, right? Eating all day. I got two girls. I ain't never realized how much my kids ate until I keep watching that stockpile go down. Yeah, and also when you're at home, you tend to snack and munch. Yeah, you got to do something, right? Right. Somebody told me they gained like 20 pounds. So here's the social media question of the day. Does the need to work outweigh the coronavirus safety concerns? Did you see Governor Rob Goyevich, former Governor Rob Goyevich, wrote a, um, I saw you do that, Sonny. Uh, 
D did you see former Governor Rob Bogoyevich penned an op-ed that didn't get very much traction, but he said that he also alluded to the fact that everybody needs to work, and that is what is making people not shelter in place. A lot of people are not sheltering in place because they like, bust what you talking about. I'd rather be dead than not be able to pay these bills and stuff. Ty, can, have you ever been in a space where the phone bill collectors call you like every day and you scared to pick up your phone? Man, if I see a number I don't recognize, I don't pick up my phone now. So so you understand the, the, the state of blackness and you pay your bills. Yeah. Right? So I, see, a slower than I, I see old black folks trying to put it together. I see young, hard-working black folks. Man, I'm trying to find some work. I honestly am. Because, I mean, you know, like you can work from home, but like all my clients, it's like everything is like it ain't nothing for them to do. So, I'm telling you, I'm trying to wonder, do you believe that people's desire to work is really driven by their the bills. They're not trying. Nobody wants to not shelter in place, but nobody wants to go backwards. Nobody wants to come out of this and you saved your life and now your life is miserable because now you face an eviction. No, they're not going to evict you now. No, give us a call three one two three seven four eight one three zero. Does your does your does the need need to work outweigh the safety issues with the coronavirus. We'll take your calls when we come back. 312-374-8130. 312-374-8130. You know what's really funny was, it's not funny, but I was thinking, I'm gonna get up early because I have some ideas. So I'm gonna try to get there at 5.30 while Maze is in his thinking phase. I'm going to get something to drink. All right, y'all. Todd, you and Sonia. No, Todd, you're late, so you can you can catch up here. Let me take you off. You are all alone on the camera by yourself. All alone. I felt like that most of my life. Like I said, I was I was all ready for this isolation stuff. Like, man, this is regular life. You go home, talk to your cat, eat a little bit. The only difference is now there's all these other people there too. Like, what are you guys doing here? Hmm. But I did learn some things about uh, national disaster preparedness, which I hope to uh, to tell you when we get back on the air. And it, it, it actually even relates to what Mays is talking about now, where people have to, to make this big uh, choice. Is 
recession proof job. I learned something about uh, Carl Reiner, not Carl Reiner, well, I keep on thinking of him, Mel Brooks' son. If I get the chance, I will share with the crowd. It turned out to be very interesting. And he writes books, so, this, so things are probably going well for him. Cool. Uh, Mel Brooks' son, Max. Oh, I like when he did that Dick Van Dyke thing. And he was like, with just one contact, you could take out this many people. Oh, you I saw that? Yeah. yeah. Todd, I'm a pretty well-traveled person. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Uh, traveled? I'm pretty sure you saw that at home. <laughs> Come on, machine it. Taking up this time to give you a piece of my mind. Who you think you are? Maybe one day you'll be a star. I'm sitting on the stage. Freaking up top game. Highway switching four lane. Money ain't a thing. Well, right like the firm. Fight for shirt. The fire burn. You burn like worms. Produce cheese like sperm. Grims. Expensive clothes with expensive clothes. And I sit, find wine. It's just rolls. Cause you're the way you're making me feel. I'm so glad that time to knock the hustle for real. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, Todd, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm not waiting on no stimulus package. Cause I ain't never planned for the gov government to save me. I hear that. Never not once. I ain't never expected the Calvary. And even in my worst times, I will tell you one time, no time. I tell, I tell you that time I had, got food stamps. No. You had food stamps? I got food stamps when I was in college. But everybody was getting them. It was like the best hustle ever. Because you could go down there, boy, you get them checks, you go to county market, boy. Woo! How long did you guys have money and you pay me back on food stamps? Did he pay you double? What's the tax no. on food stamps right now? Man. All right. What's, what's the tax on food stamps right now? Anyway, Todd, so my concern right now, even as I'm trying to shelter in place, and it's like it's easy for people who can rely on, you know, like I think all government workers, they like, oh, well, we'll get our check because we'll get it back from you taxpayers, right? But for the person who nobody really, it's like for the entrepreneur, everybody's, looks at you and says, well, why are you even trying to... Because uh, I have to manage a life and a lifestyle and take care of business. But not only that, I want to be a survivor. And I just don't believe that a $1,200 stimulus check is going to save nobody. I always used to say, man, people used to be like, if I had an issue, people be like, you need me to loan me some money? Leave me, leave, need me to loan you some money? And I would usually be like, not disrespectfully, but the money I need, if, if I need a loan, the average person giving me $200, $200 ain't helping me. Hmm. Right? It's like, thanks. I might as well just buy use this to buy the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never felt that way. Uh, I always felt like well, no, I mean, I did feel, feel what you're, that you're saying. I, I always felt like, you really want to give me uh, some help, then you will steer me somewhere where I can make some real money and feed myself. But, but I will take it to, to cross the bridge. But, you know, people don't even know what real money, like, and it's funny because what people think of real money is. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Frank. Frank, you're on the top of Chicago. Uh, does the need to work 
outweigh coronavirus safety concerns? Heck no. And good morning, Minister Major. You had me cracking up yesterday. <laughs> and Brother Talk, how y'all doing? Good morning. You know what I'm saying? Not only does it not outweigh your safety, but the safety of others. Minister Mays, if I had my way, this will go on until they find a cure, but they're not going to do that. At least get it down to there are no new cases for at least a week. Nowhere in this country, not just one state, nowhere. Then people can go back to work. Minister Mays, and I said, you kind of short the stopping on this $1,200. Tell it all the way out. They not only get $1,200 for the single parent mom, they get the husband death. And each one of the kids get $500. That's a lot of money. <laughs> God is God will have been worth. Look at all the. You don't know my kids, Frank. You don't know my kids. Look at all the negative things that was happening within our community and towards our community that, that God has put a stop to. You don't want to open up college for everyone like you do K two twelve. Well, I'm gonna make sure no one can go to college then. Okay, God knows that He's doing what you need to do, Minister May. Is quarantine these people in the facility everywhere. Central facility, take them there and take care of them with all their needs until they are cured, okay? And not just make them quarantine, step quarantine at home, remove them out of circulation. When it gets down to there's no new cases for at least a week, like I said, then let people go back to work. Ooh, all right, Frank, I got to stop you right there. Frank talking about starting some concentration camps. Let's go, Wanda. Wanda, you want to talk to Chicago 1690? I'm not ready. Wanda? Hello? Come on, Wanda. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Bimo, aka Bronda. Hey, Bimo, what's going on? Hey, good morning, guys. I think that people want to survive. Yes. I don't think that people would just put their lives on the risk for for nothing. I think the unknown. I think the unknown is there. We don't really know much about how this disease is transmitted, how long it's airborne, how it's on your clothes. People are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, I'm a people don't people don't know how they're going to survive after tomorrow. I don't think people will just put their lives at risk. You know, I was always taught that obedience is the highest form of sacrifice, but we don't all have the same values. We don't all save the same way. We don't all think the same way, which is why we have this virus moving so rapidly, which is why some of the senators sold their stock before this thing had come out because they knew we weren't just prepared for it. That's my comment. Thanks, Bimo. Let me say this. I think it's real easy for people. Let, let, let me just say this. And I, I want everybody to social distance and I want everybody to sit home and I want them to do their whole thing. But I, I think it's pretty easy for people who don't necessarily have the responsibilities to provide, to say, okay, well, just sit home, right? I think that, you know, I it, I have a real challenge, honestly. Because, guys, I really, if I don't work, I don't eat. It's funny, we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, and uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha said, have you ever been poor? And I said, no, but I've had the feeling that I wasn't able to do something. I wasn't able to contribute, and it felt like being poor. Right. I mean, and it depends on where you live. I mean, I think, like, people are just so used to just pushing the button and it magically happens, right? Like, my kids are used to just going to the refrigerator and knowing it's going to be full, right? They don't have to think about the challenges of getting it there, right? Nope. And I, I think for people that are providers, right, there is a whole nother set of challenges that are weighing on their minds that quite frankly helplessness that's the way i felt i felt helpless well see and quite frankly a lot of the providers because they are providers they know that sick health wellness whatever they gotta provide because when everybody else does it guess what they it all falls on them it's top chicago 1690 we'll be back the talk of chicago and the voice of the nation is no, I, I think it's real easy for everybody to say, right, like, don't go to work, don't do nothing, right? Because they don't necessarily know what it takes. Nobody knows what it takes to do what you do. They just know it works, right? Nobody says, hey, Dad, how did you 
provide for blah, 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 blah. They just say, we're going. We're eating. We're, right? Oh, yeah. And so. My kids used to always say, I'd say, look, I don't have any more money. They're like, well, why don't you just go to the ATM? <laughs> because I don't know how to break it into it and rob it without going to jail. And I, I think it's, I think oftentimes it's just super simple. Like, I don't think like, I think when you're a provider, right, you start thinking about all the things that you got to take care of. Yeah. That if you don't have these revenue streams, how do you do all the things that everybody else is used to doing? That nobody has a question about. Nobody really says, ooh, how did this happen? How did we get, you know, it's just like, it just magically appears. Right. Right? It's like, I used to think like, like my kids would be like, but you, you, you're home all the time. We see you all, well, no, you just don't see the work that I put in. You just don't know where I work and you don't know how I work and you don't know the sacrifices that I make for your livelihood. Yeah, they don't know how to solve Right? They so you just know you eating. And so it's like I always think, like I always say, like I don't have a safety net. I don't. I'm not going to, I don't have, if I don't earn, I don't have, I can't guarantee that in two weeks I'm going to have a paycheck. Right, the the government, not the and and when I say that, I mean like I'm not gonna go return to work. I have to return to rebuilding a business. I'll give you another example. My sister, for the last twenty years, we've worked with Feld Entertainment. They just fired ninety percent of their employees, which means, and they canceled all the shows for the rest of the year. Now. That ain't coming back. Not, I mean, maybe it comes back a year from now, but you got to rejigger and replan for everything. Right. But there's such a thing as uh, penny wise and pound foolish stuff. If you're dead, you'll never be able to help your family. I get that. I'm not tripping on that. I'm not tripping on that. And I'm not saying it's, but I'm saying like shit, you, you don't want to be the person that watches them starve out to death either. No, you don't You'd rather be dead than watch them starve. I don't know about that. Okay. I don't, I don't I'm not saying that, that, but I'm saying <laughs> so I know what you mean, but yeah, but it, it but it's it's a, a balancing act for sure. Uh, no, I just think it, it gets it it gets like for me I just think like everybody just be like, Oh well, it's all good and I'm I'm not debating life or death. I'm just saying like it's it weighs. And it's like you're trying to think of what can I do in the meantime. Like right now I'm trying to redesign my business plan to move forward. How do I rejigger my game plan for the rest of the year knowing that the potential that all the people that I have had as clients for the last 10 years may not come back in business? True. Well, no, I understand because I'm like, all right, all of the things I did for Howard all dealt with being around people. So none of that's going on. <laughs> can't do that uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the station they may be like we don't have enough money to pay two people I may be like out and about so that's another thing so how, you're right how do I supplement that when there's really nothing going on right and so that's all like that's the stuff I like I just think nobody says that they just be like and I'll be like uh, I think like, I think there's a lot of guys, like, fathers right now, who have an undue amount of pressure on them. Not even just fathers. But I'm saying, like, the men that I know, mm -hmm. they sitting around thinking, like, think about if you're a lobbyist. Ain't no lobbying going on. I was thinking about that today, actually, because I was thinking about somebody I know who's a lobbyist. Well, I mean, your clients are calling you huh. saying, man, there's no session in Springfield. Why am I going to pay you X number of thousands a month? There's no building going on, so there's no construction. City Hall is closed, so there's no reason for you to go there. There's no legislators you can meet because you're social distanced. What? What do you do? And when... Yeah, what do you do? No, what do you do? I'll be right back. I'm going to give you and Sonia.
You got the camera. That's a that's a tough question. What do you do? I mean, that's when the uh, I guess in in a lot of instances that's when the government comes in handy. Hey Todd. No, he isn't. I, no, I read this already. I read this before. Charles and Some of the things. Mm. Shopping sprees, no more late night freeze, no more VIPs, no more dough. You can't even kick it no more. No more though. We can't even kick it no. You are tuned in to Top Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Strojan. Ty, it is the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Miss Sonia Escobar. She is the music conductor of the Soul Plane. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. And Todd, 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 did you see the White House and the Senate agreed on a $2 trillion, tr 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 trillion that time. Do you notice these numbers keep moving? Like we used to, remember when a billion dollars, first of all, I remember when you thought you had a million dollars, you couldn't be touched. Holy moly. A million dollars, now they be laughing at you over you a million that, dollars. remember that movie with uh, Michael Myers, uh, what was that, uh, with the British uh, spy, Austin Powers? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He wanted a million dollars. They're like, that ain't no money. <laughs> <laughs> then remember when it got to a b -b -b billion? Woo. Then remember then trillions. I'm just telling you, Todd, the money is just out of here. Three, two trillion dollars uh, that they are giving back to American citizens. Let me tell you how some of that breaks down. 367 billion to make payroll. Um, can I point out something? Because I hear a lot of people talking about why in the world would we pay businesses? Can I tell you those jobs that you have? You, you, if you want to return to your job, then they probably need to get some money. I don't think most people, and I, I could be speaking uh, only for me and a small group, but I don't think most people have a problem with that. I think uh, the problem they had was the rules were so loose, it was the kind of thing where the... You could walk right through it. <laughs> well, the executives could uh, you know, not do certain things and keep the money themselves and wouldn't make its way down. Okay, so they fixed that, right? Uh, well, apparently yeah, well, the Democrats wouldn't before. Okay, Chuck Schumer fixed that. So I'm excited that, first of all, I'm glad that they found a deal, that there was a bipartisan agreement. Uh, they said they're going to put $500 b -b billion into hospitals, airlines, and industry. And then they're going to give $1,200 per adult, $500 per child. They said they're also going to make sure that four months of salary, of American salary, is subsidized. 
as well as an extra six hundred dollars for gig workers, like Uber people. Yeah. So uh, well, let's start there. Let me ask a question. Do you think that helps? And how does that work in the black community? Right. Give us a call three one two three seven four eight one three zero. So three hundred sixty seven billion to make payroll. How many black small black businesses are there that are going to be doing that? Let's just think about Illinois. Five hundred billion for airlines, hospitals, and industry. How much airlines, hospitals, and industry do we own? We do work there. Yeah, we work. And then twelve hundred dollars per adult and five hundred per child. So the five hundred per child is dang near my child's allowance um, for well college expenses, right? That's what I pay. You know, like room and so that ain't covering. That ain't. I mean, that's just the room. I'm not gonna spend your money, but I, I don't think either one of us will fall under the guise of uh, getting any of this money. Right. <laughs> like, but Todd, I'm, I'm again Those one more reason two. why I'm nervous. Yeah. Right. Right. Because this don't there's I don't fit in any of these categories. Right. Because if I'm if I I think they said this relates to your uh, taxes tax, tax bill, and you got that big pension. Mm, well, it's not big, but. It, it just makes a threshold, I think. <laughs> Todd, we got problems, man. We got problems. Um, so let's talk about the bailout, first of all. Do you think that it is effective? Will it help you? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. I'm going to start with Daniel. Daniel, you on the live line. What's up, man? Daniel? Ah, oh, Daniel done went home. Daniel done said, bless y'all. Y'all yeah, have my brother. Daniel, no, my brother, but you got to uh, go get your own. All right, well, let's go to Linda. Linda! Is that Linda from the village? Yeah, good, morning. <laughs> good morning, Linda. Turn that radio down in the back, too. <laughs> he didn't get to that I think phone Linda yet. has a point. That, that, that there's so much manufacturing being done in China, we are dependent upon them for everything now. They didn't have to bankrupt the insurances. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, then we, we bail out the insurance companies. So, we did. Yeah. They already got their bailout. Station. Also, um, in order for you to run the company, you have to have insurance uh, for, for bailout or whatever. Okay. So I guess my thing is this: I don't. I'm not against anybody getting a bailout, really, because I think this this hit across the board. Yeah. Like I don't. I'm not. I. I like. I think that the insurance, the in the hits that everybody is taking. I don't think we can afford to say, uh, "Well, screw them." But I just don't think they can get afford to say screw us either. I don't think that people sometimes recognize the role that industry plays in this game. Right. Right? And so in this process, Todd, I am I am concerned that we're not going to do well with this recovery. Like I, I don't feel like the black community is positioned and I, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna have a okay, so I am going to have a real problem when, uh, let me ask a question, right? is this recovery going to undocumented immigrants? I was looking at the uh, Chicago tonight. Oh, you, they probably said give it to them. They need it too. What's the recovery package for the undocumented immigrants? Well, guys, Paris did ask a question to uh uh, a young lady who works at the Indo, I think, American Society. And he did ask about undocumented workers and how they were working with them. And, oh, if he didn't ask that question, she volunteered. And uh, she was saying that, you know, it's going to be tougher on them, but they will be working with them, trying to find food and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm not saying they shouldn't get food. I think everybody should get the basic human humanity. But what I am going to say is that are we going to be paying... For See, I guess my thing is, why in the black community will we pay for these businesses that have never been our friends to recover? And I'm going to just be honest with you while we're talking about it. I'm not really a fan of, um, like, I, my compassion level for 
the um, Chinese people is about as equivalent as theirs is to us in any of our issues. Ever seen them? Did you see <laughs> one of the comedians, and I can't remember which one. Godfrey. Godfrey, oh, Godfrey. Godfrey Dachma, who I went to college with. <laughs> well, I've seen Godfrey before, and he is funny. But that was hilarious. You know, it's fine, that because that was pretty funny. Uh, find Godfrey Dodgeman's skit. He did an Instagram skit on Asians. Because I'm going to just tell you, Todd, I'm going to be honest. I feel like everybody is going to be recovering from this. Everybody, Like the Indo-Chinese American Association is going to be doing all the grants for the Chinese businesses. And they're going to get money to recover Chinatown. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you that the mayor and the governor and everybody else is going to work double time to bring make sure Chinatown gets resources. I am asking Todd with this recovery, how, how, how will this help us? Because again, I don't want to see the Asian corner store rebuilt in our community. I don't want them to take stimulus money, tax dollars, to come to the black community and then double down on the businesses that they already gouge us for. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I mean, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, Am I crazy? No, no, we used to talk about this all the time. I, I can't remember the number of the dollars supposed to, to go in your neighborhood five or ten times or something like that. And because of these type of stores, you know, the dollar leaves our neighborhood like instantly. One time. Right. <laughs> you buy with them and they, and they don't buy anything from black people. Right. Nothing. They don't, they, when they pack up, they pack up and they go. They so, may walk over to Walgreens, but that's not really your, you know. I, I feel like we need to have someone right now making sure that this, this recovery plan does not set black po folks back. Because what I feel like is if I was them, I would be using this money to buy the vacant lot next door because I know I'm about to run all these black folks up out of here right now. Think about when they use it in a place like Woodlawn, a place like South Shore. When they take this recovery money, bring it in, and somebody smart enough to line up all the people and do all the grants, think about Chinatown becoming rebuilt again. Which I would not be surprised. Oh, no! Because they're going to have, because right now they're the victims. They have now become the victims of the virus. Hence, that's why you saw Chicago tonight broadcasting live on the street in the middle of the cold, like right. with nobody in Chinatown, still telling us to come to Chinatown. Have you ever seen anybody stand on a corner in the black community and broadcast and say, we have to save this community? Did anybody stop that and do that when, when Target came? Remember when Target just, when all these companies started pulling out of the black neighborhood? You mean Target and Best Buy? Mm -hmm. Remember when they all pulled out? I guess now Wasn't I'm nobody crazy. crying telling them they couldn't leave these communities and desolate our communities? No. How, we, we, you, man. I went to Target the other day on 95th and... Uh, and Pulaski? Yeah. In <laughs> South Chicago, 1690. We'll be back. More of The Morning Show with Maze Jackson. You know, Maze, at some point, if uh, we have time today, I would like to mention what I did learn about uh, national preparedness and how uh, the ball has been dropped. Okay. Do it at, um, you could do it at 747, right after we do Kwame. Okay. Fair, fair. I know you don't like me beating up on your person. Uh-uh, I don't care. I'm, I, I'm just saying that. <laughs> Yeah, they got all these these funny kind of cakes. I saw that somewhere. Toilet paper cakes. Okay, so like again, so how much did that cake cost? Probably so, real money. That's my point. Like I'm not doing none of that shit. <laughs> like I, I promise you. Like I got a reserve, but I'm not doing shit. I'm not buying no extra nothing. Like look, you can't tell what's in the future. I'm like, man, y'all gonna eat that? We made chicken nacho. We had. Barbecue chicken the day before, we had chicken nachos. We had fried chicken last night. We're going to have fried chicken salad today. Right? <laughs> but I'm, and it's like, it's. spaghetti two days ago. I ate it two days ago. I ate it yesterday. And Claire ate it, even though she generally doesn't want my spaghetti. I was like, this is what we got. You had to find something in the refrigerator. I ain't calling nothing. Right. And it's like, I feel like 
when times get tough, I'm going to be the one that got to go outside and hunt. <laughs> right? If the savages come. You feel like. Right. Hey, you're the only one. <laughs> if the savage, I mean, I just think, and it's like, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I just don't know what to expect during this. Right? Right. Like, when people call you and they say, hey, man, we don't know if we're going to be in business. We love you, but. No, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, you're right. And look, I, I think I told you my, my uh, one of my relatives has the virus. And I'm a survivor, so I'm a hustle. And you never, nothing is stopping me, right? Oh, yeah. If I got to work at 10 McDonald's to feed my family and work 400 hours a week, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I told you my, my relative has the, the virus, and man, it ain't no joke. I mean, I don't know how they didn't keep her in the hospital. Because they don't have the space. They like, if we can get you to a manageable space, get out. Because they got to keep cycling the beds through. Shoot. I think I'm not going to the store today. I cannot think of anything we should need, and I do not want to spend any more money. I'm amazed in this. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Take a moment, share the broadcast. payments still come out. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Like, that's my point. The car payment still comes out. My the tuition payment is still due. The, the 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 landlord ain't said we don't want our money. No. The, right? And everybody, like. You are tuned in to Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. And Todd, I'm asking the so well, I'm not asking the social media question of the day, but the federal stimulus has finally been approved. They're gonna spend two trillion dollars of that two trillion three hundred and sixty-seven billion help businesses make payroll. Five hundred billions to help airlines, hospitals, and industry. Plus, they're going to give $1,200 per adult, $500 per child. Uh, Four-month salary, they are subsidizing on the payroll. Y'all, is it enough, and will it help the black community? Um, somebody sent me a text. Hey, y'all, it, 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 I got a child in college, right? They got to pay their rent and money. You got to pay it. I mean, like, and it's funny because what you see is people, like colleges and universities, they're not killing tuition they just said man you on e-learning send us that money right the 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 catholic schools talk about they cancel class they ain't cancel they ain't cancel no tuition they cancel classes and then they sent everybody on their ebooks and they sent you a tuition bill right well, same thing at the high school right exactly and so my question becomes like realistically like i don't think that they're saying like i don't think the catholic charities are they giving out free food but they like we need our money now, even if I got twelve hundred plus five hundred per kid, that's about one. I'm not even go there. I don't. I'm not saying it won't help, but I'm telling you that if you're off work for three months, right? What happens? What happens if you're one of the business? You're a company, and the business doesn't come back. I got people calling me saying we're not gonna be back if this thing lasts more than. Two months. Think about a real estate company that nobody's paying rent for three months, and you got ten thousand units. I got a client like that, and everybody like, oh, I ain't paying no rent. Yeah. yeah. I, right. And what you gonna do? You can't get kicked out. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's go to Hope. Hope you're on top of Chicago. Sixteen ninety. Is the stimulus enough? And will we be using this money to rebuild Asian businesses in our community? Well, it's a, it's a double-edged sword for black businesses, and let me tell you why. We have a lot of young and older workers that are still employed in the under-economy from the last recession. If you will, these are the ones that are paid under the table. 
Consequently, those businesses that employed them will not benefit from this at all because they're not counted in terms of payroll taxes. Secondly, we have many businesses in our community and, again, a certain donut chain. They employ workers through work visas. And those employees that they have that are working through work visas, they will benefit because they are on the payroll. Consequently, black businesses suffer again. So, yes, this will benefit Asian-based businesses and individuals more than black businesses. This is what happens when you don't have politicians that are sensitive to our business concerns. Thank you, gentlemen. Hope, thank you. Because I think Hope gets what I'm trying to say. Like, you know how there's nuance to negotiation? Yes. What was the nuance, the black nuance to the negotiation? So what I would love to do, because everybody was all happy to come on the WBOM morning show and I wasn't here. What I'd like for those people to do is call us back and tell us, because I heard I was listening, call us back and tell us what you got for black people. Now, this is a perfect example. So, if we look at the math right now, and Hope pointed out something else that was way crazy, but who will benefit from this, this stimulus package in our black community? And were the black legislators, you saw how the business people were using their lobbyists to figure out how they could get her, make the, maximize the opportunity on this? On this, on this stimulus package so that they could use it to their benefit to meet the needs of their... Who were the black people negotiating at the table and said, who said, you know what, most of our people are unemployed. Not most of our people. A, tri a tremendous amount of our economy is an underground economy. So we got to figure out a stimulus for that. We also got to figure out a stimulus because how many of our people haven't filed their taxes? But are, how many of the people, Todd, that you see on the street on a daily basis are reprising their hustle, right? The, the loose square salesman, the weed man, all of the people that you see moving around is because everybody got some sort of hustle going on to make it through this economy. Like we talk about the gig workers and that's cool, but who speaks for us in this space? So oh, again, go ahead. No, 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 I was just thinking, I, I met a loose squares guy at 95th and the Ryan one. Real nice guy. <laughs> he said that's what he did, and he did some some carpentry work on the side. Be man, because we have we always figure out a way to adapt. So they run up the cost of cigarettes. The Arabs then go buy a bunch, bring them in, and put us on the corner to sell. Them. And then you sell the Lucy's two for a dollar to subsist in this community. Like think about how many people are unemployed in the black community, and the economy that keeps them alive. Right. And it's a combination of a legal and illegal economy, illicit that comes together to create the mass that you need to survive. Remember I used to talk about the quarter pound man with the cannabis? Right? The guy who bought a quarter pound but he didn't he wasn't violent, he wasn't on the street, but he used that to supplement his income because he couldn't make it off of eight, nine hundred dollars a month. Right. Where are we as black people addressed in this stimulus package? And who was the person that went in and said, you know what, that ain't going to work for black people. I, I think part of the problem is elected officials, they, they need a business person slash, I would think probably somebody from a, a university to, to be in the, the mix to demand certain things. And then they need to stick together and, you know, I, I would say every, every once in a while you got to fall on your sword. Sometimes you got to take one in the, in the kidneys because if you don't, they won't. They will never respect you. They know that they, that we can get by this. In the end, they will fall. They will just collapse. Now, now can I tell you, Sneaky Maze would have said. Right. Sneaky Maze would have called up. Some would have had some one of our emissaries go over to the president and say, "Hey, you know, this is a way we could uh, deal with this immigrant issue with the black folks. This is how you could get them in." And I'm just saying, I would be leveraging all of this. I would be leveraging his xenophobia. I would be leveraging everything. But I know at the end of the stimulus package, it ain't going to be black communities that get rebuilt. It ain't going to re -bring, bring back black business. Oh, no. They may be rebuilt, but not with us in mind of being there. Right. They will be rebuilt, and they will be like, this is why you should take this neighborhood over. Yeah. It will be, it, they will use this money to gentrify black communities 
and we will be on the outside looking in at the Top Chicago 1690. We'll be back. Attorney General Kwame Raoul is with us next. Live from the WBON Newsroom, here's... What up, y'all? Did I tell you too much? Was that too much for you? Y'all ain't ready. Instagram, y'all not ready for these deep conversations. Y'all just be liking to look at pictures. Y'all need some pretty pictures? I don't have no pretty pictures. What up, y'all? Take a moment to share the broadcast. What's up, IG? What up, Nanette? What up, Rise Squad 620? What up, Nanette? What up, Leah? What up, Greg Ballard? What up, Nanette Jones? Kenny! What up, dog? Yeah, that you know what? I gotta get on to eat what I cook because my kids be like, they need custom menus and stuff. What up, Tanisha? All right, y'all. Who's rocking with us? What up, y'all? What up? What up? What up? All right. Up next, we got Attorney General Kwame Raul. Y'all want to see what's going on in the other room? Here, let me let y'all see what they doing over there. Oh, sorry, IG. Sorry, Instagram. Let me give y'all some. Yeah. Dr. ZK.
What up, IG? Who's rocking? Who is on the IG? What's up, y'all? Facebook Live. Oh, let me talk to the IG people. What up, Son of Seals? What up, Messy All Day? What up, y'all? Up next, Attorney General Kwame Raul. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Hey, y'all. The return of Kwame to the WVON Morning Show. Is he here? Beat a boss. Mother. You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Tosh Stroger. But hey, Todd, in the realm of what they call big gets. We got a big one. We got a big get right here on the live line, y'all. We are in the midst of a coronavirus here in Illinois. I'm going to tell y'all what, man. People people everywhere are a little nervous. They don't know what to expect. They don't know what to think. And then when they head to their local stores and they see toilet paper gone or charged at $10 a roll, when they see bottles of Lysol for $22, because people are scared. $22, Ty. I seen it all. And when I saw it, I was like, what? What the what? What can I do about this? Because, Todd, I was looking around at all the people in the aisle that I was with. Uh-huh. They was all nervous. And they was like, I can't afford $50 for a roll of toilet paper. And you said, I can't get out my way. I said, no, I did not. I said, <laughs> dang, man, I don't know what's going to happen. I think we gonna, I'm going to do like in China and start rationing the sheets. One at a time, three sheet limit, whatever happens. But let me tell you, when I saw that, I said, what can we do? And you know what the first thing that came to my mind? What? Was the attorney general. Uh Because the attorney general protects consumers. And you know what? Before I could get, get my lips together to say, let's call Kwame. He was on TV. Telling people what they could do to stop what they could do in case of price gouging. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the WVON Morning Show. Our Attorney General of the State of Illinois. It is the one and only, the inimitable. I like using that word now. I'm going to have to look that up because I don't trust it. I don't even know what it means. (laughs) It just sounds good. The one and only Attorney General from the State of Illinois. Black Attorney General. You know I'm proud of that. It is... Kwame Raul. Welcome, Attorney General. How are you this morning? Good morning, Mays. Good morning, Todd. I'm going to have to look the word up, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, I figured the smart Kappa man like yourself, with that big old legal degree, you would already know what it meant. You but know, by <laughs> this time, he's already told uh, one of his aides, get that dictionary. <laughs> get that dictionary. Get that people going. But, Attorney General, um, right now, um, uh, citizens of Illinois are just a little bit, um, they're unsettled. You know, we were just talking about the federal stimulus package and people not knowing whether they're going to be able to return. But one of the things in the, that makes everybody so nervous is they see these prices going up and they see stuff off the shelves. Uh, Attorney General, but there's not the shortages that we're thinking of. 
Why is this happening? Why are people charging outrageous prices? And what can they do to, 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 to report this? Yeah, so there, there's a combination. There, there, there could be some instances where actually a retailer's cost goes up um, because they have to do something extra to get the, the, the item or, or the, the manufacturer is charging more. Got it. Um, so that, those price increases aren't price gouging, but then the other people who are charging just crazy prices for toilet paper and hand sanitizer and wipes and things like that, uh, a lot of those instances are, in fact, uh, price gouging. Um, you know, one of the things we've encouraged, because, you know, when I go in, I go in the office every day, I, I've got a handful of... Uh, Sanitizer, I hope, first of all. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we're spraying down every day. And, okay. But, you know, I only have a few. We've we've had to enhance our technology to just have people working from home because we're, we're social distancing as well. Got it. So I, I only got a few people in the office. And uh, so I've got a lot of people working at home with cell phones and and computers to uh, call a lot of these retail establishments and and find out you know why they're charging um, crazy prices for certain items and in most cases if somebody is in fact gouging we can get them to cut it out because they got a call from the attorney general's office and and if they acknowledge it then we get them to agree in writing to to, to stop it okay. we haven't had yet to escalate it to um, filing filing uh, an action in court but if we if something does escalate to that you know they can get charged up to a fifty thousand dollar fine uh, for each each instance of, of price gouging well, well, most people just seem to be like hey i'm gonna see, see if this works and then you say no this doesn't work and they just drop it and like okay sorry it, yeah the unfortunate reality about about an unprecedented crisis like this in any crisis you have people taking advantage of people uh, like earlier uh, last year when we had the uh, tornadoes downstate you had uh, home repair fraud uh, in those in those areas mm. so usually people you can usually look for people to try to take advantage of crisis we got people um, we've been warned of people going um, door to door uh, um, and be, be pretending to be uh, public health officials uh, Nobody's going to come door to door offering to test you. Right, right. Excuse me, I have a test that nobody else in the world has. I got you. Mays is still looking for these two guys in campaign. No, they got me. Uh, Attorney General, how? So give give me some 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 things that people can look for to know that or know that there's price gouging because again, you said there were prices that were going like so. If I go to the corner store, right, and they yeah. have taken a a plenty pack. And unroll the plenty pack of toilet tissue and rewrap them at five dollars a pop. Is that gouging? Hmm. Yeah, more than likely. I mean, if you have somebody, I, I've heard of an instance where uh, I think a gas station had uh, Kirkland water and 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 marked it up. So you know that they went to Costco, got their water, and then this just, just just hiked it up. Hmm. Uh, so there there are obvious signs signs like that uh the toilet paper thing is is really tripping me out because uh i think that grows out of a panic um it's it's interesting to me what people commonly go for in 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 a uh instance of a crisis and toilet paper seems to be it um and i don't fully understand i don't fully understand how much toilet paper one needs to have how, how, do, how many women live in your house I tell you, then all the people that made a rush on the toilet paper have more than one woman in the house. I'm like, what do y'all do? Eat the toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> Is that well? You know what we've been trying to get encourage people to do, because you know you got a lot of people going to the grocery store every day and don't really have a need to go to the grocery store every day. So every time somebody goes to the grocery store, they they enhance their risk of becoming infected, right? And spreading it to somebody somebody else. Don't go to the grocery store because you need one product. Um, that's that's not what this is about. This this stuff is real. Um, this stuff is pre spreading like crazy in, in in New York, and we do have an opportunity. I know people at first were wondering whether this warning to to stay at home and the social distance, whether it was it was something real or not. It is real. Um, 
you know, Prince the 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 announcement that Prince Charles even has uh, is infected with the coronavirus now. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, it's important that when we go to the grocery store, I think you know now at Costco they they ration it. So you, for toilet paper, they allow you to buy one thing of toilet paper, which is which is a good thing to do. But people need to think about when they're shopping. Uh, think about their elderly neighbors. Think about folks. Um, who didn't have an opportunity to go go in the store and, and hoard like some people have done? Uh, that that contributes to the gouging because if somebody comes in and buys up all the toilet paper, then the the retailer is going to be like, okay, I'm going to start charging ridiculous prices for this. Well, let me tell you something. I just need to encourage you, uh, Attorney General, to check out Pete's, okay? Because the chicken aisle has gone. The co- I'm telling you, the chick the cost of chicken at Pete's at this point is off the chain. I'm like, a chicken wing can't cost three dollars a pound. It just can't. But I'm telling you, um the the last thing I want to do because Attorney General, I know you got a lot of things that you're dealing with right now. Att- uh, one of the things that I, I want I would hope that this leads to or is that the price gouging is not new in our community. You know, you talked about breaking up these people going to stores, buying stuff from Costco, breaking it up and reselling. We've seen that at these corner stores and locations in our neighborhoods for years and they know people are trapped in their communities and so they do sort of the same thing and I think this is an enhanced version of it that's spreading outside of our communities. So, Attorney General, at the end of this epidemic, is that something that we could ask you to maybe take a look at? Uh, Absolutely. Going forward? I mean, this is, you know, let me be clear. This didn't start, our work on price gouging didn't start um, with this coronavirus thing. Got it. Uh, we took calls before, but we got to get the calls, or, or right now we've been asking people to do it online. So once we get beyond this thing, I encourage people, now they know. They can call our office. If you see it, call our office, and, and, and we will respond. Uh, uh, could you please tell everybody the, the phone number as well as the website? And then we're going to make sure we get that on the WVO. You know what I have uh, with me is the website, www.illinoisattorneygeneral.gov. We're... I can get you all the uh, phone number, but uh, we're encouraging people, if you have access to, to online, to, to do it online, mm-hmm. uh, because we've, we've got reduced staffing got in it. the office, and, and, and it's easier for us to log it uh, and get all the information online, because we've got a form as soon as you go to the website, prominent. Awesome. Hey, Attorney General, let me um, also suggest something. I'm working on trying to create a communications network amongst the people with voices on Facebook. Uh, If you guys have social graphics that you can create and distribute, we're happy to get them out to people so that they can know that. So if you just get us a quick graphic, we'll share it out throughout our networks and try and make sure that it's spread uh, spread throughout the community. Not like the coronavirus, but the protection that the Attorney General is providing us throughout this time. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule in this unprecedented crisis to help Illinoisans, re- help Illinois residents understand what they need to do to prevent price gouging. We appreciate you being with us, Attorney General. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. We look forward to talking to you, man. And when this is over, we got to get you in the studio, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it more when we come back. It's the Talk of Chicago 1690. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson okay, Todd, coming this up is your time. on the Talk of Chicago. To do your emergency preparedness stuff. We'll do it when we come back. Okay. Okay. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Right? What? Well, yeah, I think I'm uh, that. Use it. Own it. Use it as your own if you want. That's funny. <laughs> okay, Todd and Sonya, y'all are. Hey. You know, in the old days, if you're the Attorney General, you could expect a run for governor at some point, which would be cool. I'd like to see that happen one day, but it would have to be really organized because, man, attorney generals used to win all the time. In the, the recent history, they haven't won as much, but <coughs> that doesn't mean we can't make that happen. Uh, uh, I like that, Rashida Wadi. That is good stuff. 
Instagram audience and everything. Spray your hand, Todd. They said you coughing in your hands. Spray your hands. Oh. Did I cough? I didn't even know that. Here. Open your hand. Don't touch it. <laughs> you are... You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1698. What was that? Was that an that, that was a hard abrupt stop. I was it like, was, it was like she just pulled the needle off. She was like, what? I was like, hey, did you hear me? Hey y'all, this is Talk of Chicago 1698. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. And y'all Todd. Todd. First of all, you this 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 week, this this the epitome of black stuff, right? So you know Todd came to work late today. Then he came in late. Talking about he got something he want to talk about. I was like, people who want who really got something to talk about want to be here early. But that's maybe okay. That's why I couldn't. Uh, I mean, I was up all night, and maybe that's why because I was like, I have something I want to say. And that made me late because I got up late. All right, Crazy. well, well, what did you want to say, Todd? Todd, you know what? Well, let me just back up. You all may not know, but Todd does have some experience in emergency management, right? Because as the head of the Cook County, the president of the Cook County Board, you are responsible for homeland security here, right? Uh, that's right. Actually, when I, I became the president, uh, the sheriff was the head of Homeland Security. You checked him. <laughs> You're like, give me that. Well, literally, uh, I went to Washington and I talked to the, the two heads of the uh, committees in the Senate and, and the House. And they were like, no, this was designed for an administrator. We don't want it to be a, a fire copper. or a cop. Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I became the head of Homeland Security. And then he snapped on, and then he probably jumped in. The, in the we hate Todd Crew too, huh? No, no, we work together really well. Oh, yeah, good. Really you good. know, what Tom Dart seems like he always he's he likes you know he. he you know, as the other ones would run away when they see me coming. Mm -hmm. He and Gene Moore were, and David Orr, who was an uh, an enemy in the other camp, but he was all business. Got it. Okay, so go ahead, Todd. So uh, you had some things you wanted to share with us about the lack of preparedness nationally yes, at this point. Yes, I, I was Talk listening to, to a uh, interview mm -hmm. with uh, 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 Max um, Brooks, who is Mel Brooks' son. Uh, he is a writer, and he has written a lot of, uh, of books. Well, I should say a lot. He's written about three or four books about zombies. But... But the book is really about <laughs> emergency management. And zombies. Yeah, because it's really about how the government responds to zombies. the epidemic that creates the zombies. Got it. So that movie with Brad Pitt's... Uh, X something. Z, V, I don't remember, okay. zombie something. Yeah, that was really about how to combat a virus that was spreading and making people into the zombies. So he said he did a lot of... Is, uh, uh, research. He he has a network of experts on this, 
uh, and he says what we have is the government has been preparing for this kind of crisis since 1918 when the Spanish flu happened. And that what should have happened was the president and I think very, well, I would say the Republican presidents really probably wouldn't want to do this, but probably this one even more than others, has the ability to go to our, our companies in America and say, we need this and we need you to do certain things. And he had a good example. So he says, if we wanted rubber gloves, the manufacturers of gloves or someone who can do it, they know. The government actually knows everything. They know who can make masks. They know who can make gloves uh, in an emergency. So what they would do is they go to like uh, the condom group and say, switch to we put five fingers on that penis instead of. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say we need your rubber. Well, they'll take their rubber. Ill. They'll something's not right about this. <laughs> yeah, it's a little sticky, but. <laughs> they take the rubber and they send it to the company that makes the. Uh, the gloves. Uh, so they, they know all this. They know who can do what and where they can get the materials. But the, the problem is the president has to say this is an emergency and actually talk to the companies and make them do it. And I think there is a, uh, I think this president has decided that he does not want to use those powers and, and try to tell companies what to do. Okay. I'm a little nervous. I think I just need to say this, right? Let me just say this. Two months ago, President Trump, two months, two months ago, President Trump declares that I have decided there is a national epidemic and I am changing all of these companies to condom producers are now latex producers. You're going to start making instead of cars, you're going to make vehicles. Make. <laughs> <laughs> I think the government has to pay. I got you, price. but I'm saying the moment he does that, the moment he does that, we're going to be calling a dictatorship. No, because there's, there's precedent for this. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, the, there's the, precedent the, for all type World of War stuff. Two, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Brooks said, that he has a gun that was made by Corona typewriters, uh, and that's because the government stepped in and said, "Look, we need you to work with Winchester." And they did, and they started making guns. So that's how the Emergency uh, Preparedness Act is supposed to actually work. We're supposed to, to get in front of the curve to make sure that when something happens that we are prepared to handle it immediately. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Instead of what we're doing now, which is like, you know, running 100 paces behind. Okay, got it. I, I, Todd, I'm not debating that at all. I know this, though. I'm going to tell y'all what, y'all going to keep y'all social distance from me. <laughs> y'all keep y'all distance from me. Because I, I, it's like, I still believe black folks don't believe fat meat is greasy. And it's like, everybody be walking around. I, I started watching Contagion yesterday. I'm going to tell you, in a minute, I'm going to be coming in this mug with my own. Oh, oh, I'm going to be broadcasting from the crib. Because y'all just, y'all just going, y'all going to make a mug get sick, ain't you? <laughs> y'all telling you, I'll be like, I'll be like, hold on, y'all, y'all not, y'all not worried about none of the virus, none of it. I'm gonna tell y'all now, this is Mays Jackson. You keep your germs to yourself, and you call the president, and you call, you tell the president to switch over the the car manufacturers, tell Tesla to switch the car manufacturers to all. All of these people. So Todd, is he doing well, this? So we already know. We know who can make ventilators. We so why they not making them? Because they, they waiting on the president to pay them? Well, they haven't been asked. Got it. Okay. Well, so look, y'all. Actually, the car makers already told us that they can make ventilators. They just said on TV they was confused about why he said that. Look, y'all, it's time Chicago 1690. Y'all got me confused. If I'm confused, and I think everybody confused, we'll be back after traffic and the weather. The news. talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. Yeah, see, the president has to be in front. And, and he has Chicago. not shown a willingness to be in front of this kind of uh, A 13 year old girl has been reported. But I think that's what happens when you're too close. To, um, business. To business, yeah. I don't see why the businesses wouldn't switch over. They ain't gonna sell the other stuff. Right, nobody buying that. <laughs> Shoot. Look, I'm gonna be like, there is no social distance in the um, control room. I will not be going out of this office. I'm gonna put some of y'all. It's like, that's my question. What happens when people don't believe in social distancing? So they just be like, I'm gonna just do it regardless. Oh, you mean like those parties? Mm-hmm. 
Or, like, what if you believe in it and somebody else don't? Right? Well, I'm staying at home. Yeah. I've made all my runs to the store. There's, there's nothing, I mean, until we run out of food again, but the, the refrigerator's packed. I'm going to have to make some pre-meals, cook, and put things in the refrigerator. Alright, y'all got to, we gotta got start getting some oh. space. Yeah. How you doing, bro? Alright, sit over there. Alright. You. We should have did this as a call, bro. All of this stuff, we should do all of these things. Like when I'm doing this though, Todd, just do calls. Yeah, I love people, but I don't want to see them back. Like calls, calls, calls. <laughs> right. Calls, calls, calls. I got nothing against you. you know no, this. Right I right thought right. it was a phone call. Right. I'm not offended if you don't grip me today. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> so, Kev, we'll probably do about like five, seven minutes. Okay, this, all okay. Right? Yeah, uh, man, I reached so out to you. You're going to have to like lean into the microphone. Oh, right here. Yeah, that's what's as far as okay. it goes out there. All right. Yeah, so basically, 100% of the kids are black. Most of the mentors are, you know, come from the north side and the white. And, um, you know, I had some ideas coming in, I guess, as the first black recruiter that they ever had to uh, try to change that with the fraternity, with the HBCU alumni in different networks, you know, three hours a month, I figured. Hey, oh, X you, all right. <laughs> Man, I went to a game down there one year during Mardi Gras, the Dillard Xavier basketball game. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, tell Maze. He Man. don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks if it's not Big Ten, it's not fun. Man, I wanted to go Big Ten, but they didn't want to give me no money. So. Well, money is important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is important. Yeah, I ended up going to Morehouse. No, oh, Morehouse, man. Yeah. Before the skirts? Yeah, yeah, back in the day. How old are you? 49. I'll be 50 this year. Class of 88 high school, I went to Leo. Ah, Leo yeah. Catholic. Yeah. Kevin looks like Vince. That's my best friend. Oh, okay. All right. What else is son? Yeah. Uh -huh. And Kevin, your title with Big Brothers. You Big Brothers, right? Yeah. What is what's your title? Uh, recruitment specialist. Okay. All right, y'all, take a moment, share the broadcast. What's up to all my shorties that's out there watching right now? To all the shorties out there hanging with Uncle Maze, because you at the crib right now. Yeah, let's do this. What's up, y'all? So we are out here. We are going to be talking about big brothers, big sisters. That's right, Big Ten. Boiler up. Boiler? What's that? Boiler makers? Like... Like, who really makes a boiler? Like, where did they come up with that name? Like, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. Purdue. That's big, big work. Purdue Boilermakers? You make boilers? We had some boilermakers at the uh, water rack. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> boiler schmoiler.
<laughs> Tanil, your boy, your boy is in the, on the lurk. Over in the Dan Ryan to Speedy Ehrman Memorial and the Bishop Ford traffic is flowing freely. The Stevenson 19 yeah, minutes, Eisenhower 29 both back. ways, Kennedy we'll 10 minutes in both directions. Lakeshore Drive right now, down. northbound and southbound, no problems. It's 35 Office degrees, dropping down, down to 44 right. tonight after a day high of upper 50s. That's traffic and weather. I'm Jennifer Thompson on 1690 AM, WVON. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. Hey, Rago, baby! With Mays Jackson on the talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Rise and shine with the WVON Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Featuring Maze Jackson. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? The WVON Morning Show. Call 773-5... Yo, boy! You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But Todd, you know how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. Now, Todd, um, you know what? We got an in-studio guest. How that happened? I'll never know. <laughs> I'll never know. But I somebody didn't get the memo. <laughs> I'm like, what? And, but I tell you what, because it's such a good program, I decided that we is gonna change the studio around and we gonna make sure. <clears throat> now you lean. Oh yes, because you gotta lean up, right? You gotta lean to the microphone here to here to talk to us as we're thinking about things that we're gonna do when we get back into the real world. Is one of my fraternity brothers. Kevin Giggers, member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, the greatest fraternity in the whole entire world, Todd. That's so right. you're just not clear. Hello. Don't what get happened? you. Don't. You lucky it ain't no. You lucky we ain't we social distancing up here. You might get. You know we. You know we. Used, you know how we used to do the alphas, man. You see, I'm wearing black and gold. Right. This that's is my that's seal. that 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 shit. It didn't used to work back in the day. <laughs> we had to buy you up in the corner. That's how I was playing. Uh, but Kevin is here because he is with big brothers and big sisters, and he is in a historical position and so I thought that it was important for him to for WVON listening audience to hear from him and how we can help Kevin welcome to the morning show how are you I'm good thank you I want to first say thank you for having uh, having me here um, to help uh, send a message of hope um, once the pandemic is over what we can do in our communities and uh, I want you to know that our cause definitely speeds on its way Go uh, Mob. Go Mob. So, Kevin, you are, now what exactly is your title at Boys and Girls Club? Uh, my title uh, with Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Oh, what's that? Is, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the bees. The bees get me all the time. Right. Uh, my title is uh, Recruitment Specialist. Uh, I'm the first African-American male to be uh, hired as a recruitment specialist. Uh, we're based out of Inglewood on the south side uh, at Kennedy King College is oh. where uh, our office is located. And uh, my task is to uh, hopefully galvanize a movement of uh, African Americans, especially males, to be matched uh, with our uh, youth in need, and we call them. Can littles. I ask that a question though? Yes. What does Big Brothers Big Sisters do? Uh, well, Big Brothers Big Sisters uh, supports uh, mentoring in a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a one-year commitment for uh, three hours a month. Um, it's a small commitment but it definitely changes lives. We have data that shows that uh, there's an increase in uh, graduations, reduced uh, negative behavior, and the likelihood of alcohol and drugs use, 
uh, between the ages of 7 and 14 and beyond are reduced. Can you do more than three hours a month if you want? Oh, you can definitely do more than three hours a month. We just ask two to four times a month that, uh, you know, you pick up uh, the youth and, uh, you know, find some creative ways to give them positive exposure, maybe uh, input nuggets of wisdom that they may not be receiving in the home, you know, at this time, because mm -hmm. it's definitely a crisis in the proverbial village. Now, the reason I wanted Kevin to come today, or to call in today, <laughs> <I'm>, look, <laughs> y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all playing with my life around here. Um, Kevin, the reason that we wanted to talk to you today was because I feel like one of the things that I always see with big brothers, big sisters, uh, and is that it's always white folks come into the black neighborhood to help our kids. Uh, which is kind of surprising as to me why you got the job. Because I was like, how are you going to recruit more white people to save black kids? Uh, Kevin, talk to us about what you are looking to see happen in our community with our children. Well, what I would like to see happen is, um, especially being a member of a uh, fraternity, um, a Greek historically black organization. You are? Yeah, Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue Phi. I heard. That. Um, and and shout out to the Alpha Brothers and uh, and the whole Divine Nine, which leads me to one of uh one of my um, visions that I had is to uh, galvanize all Black fraternities and sororities to spend three hours a month. I mean, you know, we have successful results currently uh, with the program, but I think that uh, the waiting list that we have is is proof positive that, that there is definitely a variance and a need for more African Americans to mentor the youth because, you know, most of the, the students or the youth on the waiting list want somebody that, that looks like them, uh -huh. you know, that they can relate to. So cultural relativism is important and, um, you know, it's, it's no uh, knock on any other race that wants to mentor our kids, but we want our community to step up because it may be a kid in your neighborhood, in your same zip code, the matching process is very effective. You have support throughout the entire process. You get to meet the family prior to the match and uh, things that you may have in common. You know, those common things uh, are the keys to matching uh, the bigs with the littles. Uh, what's the age group of the, the youth? Seven to 14. Seven to 14? Yes. Seven to 14. Yes. And what do you have to do to qualify to be a big brother? Big brother? Um, so you just have to go to uh, bbbschgo.org to our website and click volunteer and you can sign up to be a volunteer and since the pandemic sometimes in life circumstances dictate we've uh, recently gone virtual uh, with a lot of the, <laughs> with a lot of the processes uh, there's a webinar at least there's one this evening and you can definitely find that information uh, on our website uh, but we have orientations traditionally and since we're adjusting now we're gonna you know reevaluate and see how effective that the uh, virtual process is um, if we can get, you know, more African Americans involved. That's, this is my clarion call, you know, to, to all people, um, churches, uh, Christians, Muslims, whoever you are, you know, it's time for us to step up in our communities, you know, because the we is more important than the me. Kevin, right? tell us how can people sign up or register? Go to uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, BBBS, uh, CHGO.org, and you can click volunteer and it's a simple process and we will be in contact with you and you can sign up and there's definitely a need so please please go to that website and sign up and during the pandemic it's safety first we really push safety there's a simple background screen that we have to have uh, for all bigs to ensure you know the safety of the littles throughout the process and and that's it all right. Uh, Kevin, we appreciate you being here with us. Look, y'all, sign up for Big Brothers, for Big Sisters. We're going to have you back after the pandemic, and we'll talk a little bit more. We'll bring some people in, too, okay? All right. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for having me. All right, brother. We appreciate you. Blue Fi, Go Mob, and all that good stuff, because I'm going to tell y'all what, the men of Phi Beta Sigma are always. You know what? I'm going to tell y'all what. It's not just the men of Phi Beta Sigma, even though we do it the best. Um, it right. is awesome to see. Uh, black Greeks coming together, and actually not black Greeks, but black folks coming together for the betterment of our community. Kevin, we appreciate you, and we'll talk to you next time. All right, y'all. Right, now, we, we appreciate you, man. Now, let me let y'all know, we are running out of time, because you know, this is usually when we do our Urban Business Roundtable download comes up at 8.30 today. Todd? Sir? 
so I'm gonna tell you, man. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the coronavirus check-in. I I saw some messages from some people on Facebook who were telling me that they were feeling a little bit lonely, a little bit behind the um, a little bit lonely and a little bit disconnected. Um, and I thought this might be a good time for us to just tell our listeners, give us a call. 312-374-8130. Give our listeners a call. Listeners, give us a call. Tell us what you're doing. Yep. Like, reconnect. Let's connect the dots. You know what I'm saying? Let's touch base. Nobody should feel like they are out here alone. Uh, no one should feel like they are out here alone at this time. So I want to hear from our people that are out, that are in the house. What you doing? Who you talking to? What's going on? What is happening? Give us a call. 312-374-8130. Ty, what have you what have you been doing during this social uh during this social distancing? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little sleep, uh watching uh, some um, movies, um old stuff, you know. Uh Rollerball was on, so I, I recorded that. I gotta watch that. What what was on? Rollerball. What's that? Uh, that's James Caan. Um, he was, oh yeah, he was um, in a, a dystopian society. What's a dystopian society? Uh, that's a society <laughs> where things are all screwed up. Where things are all screwed up. The dystopian society. I'm going to tell you what, I feel like we're living in a dystopian society. Well, on this one, the businesses had taken over. Some people might think that maybe this is a good idea, but they had decided that they could take care of the government. They would, uh, there would be no wars. They would not fight. The only thing was is that they got to do whatever they wanted. So let's say that the head of, uh, of CNN wanted uh, your wife. Why are you always bringing my wife into it? <laughs> Why does she want your wife? Because you keep on telling me she's a beautiful queen, so everybody wants her. So. Ty, you know, you know, you're digging a super hole for yourself. <laughs> I, it, you, I can't wait for you and Carrie well, to see each other. That's why I can't wait for I y'all. Can, I can't I, give up my wife. I, I can't give up yours. I can't wait for Carrie to see you in person when this social <laughs> distance. You gonna be praying for some social distance That's right. when I'm this gonna, is over. I'm gonna be wearing one of them uh, <laughs> hazmat suits with a big old helmet. <laughs> Go ahead. So, so suppose they, they want just take anything. So he can say, okay, now ask my wife instead of your wife. Oh, so they gangsters, basically, ah. but very nice gangsters. Ah. Hi, she's I'm going like, to take your life. <laughs> and so how did that work out? So look, let me do this. I want to talk to my people. So yes. you watching Zach, you're watching Rollerball. Rollerball. I watched Larry David last night. Oh my God. Do y'all watch Kirby Enthusiasm? He has got to be the funniest thing on TV. Let's go to Michael O'Connor. Hey y'all, give us a call. 312-374-8130. Please let us know you're still out there and connect. And share some inspiration with you. Tell us one good thing you're doing. Sister Zakia, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. Uh, good morning, amazing time. Good morning. Uh, uh, quickly, I really was holding because I wanted to report to the Attorney General that Jules is selling uh, bleach uh, normally for three ninety nine and six forty nine, and I wanted him to check into that one because they said they're doing it at all of the stores. Uh, but basically, what I'm doing is just addressing my calls and my messages and organizing around the house. Oh, and I'm cooking cooking uh, food and and uh, putting it in the freezer and uh, watching all of the briefings and and I'm praying more because uh, I'm in the house more and uh, uh, contacting my family and talking to my family more and having some good conversations with some of my old friends that called me and that I haven't talked to in a long time and I'm praying for our people. Thank you, sisters and kids. You know what I'm gonna tell? Uh, I'm gonna tell some of y'all. Get your parents uh, a, a Facebook portal. My mom, I got my mom a Facebook portal, and she didn't set it up. Now she be calling up. She be like, oh, "I love this." My mom be like, "I be like, mom, but I'm not gonna watch TV with you, too." Right, yeah. my mom. No, cause she what she does is she puts it on Facebook portal, and she gets to talking to you. And then the next thing you know, she be forgetting you there, cause she like, oh, she talked to you like you on TV, <laughs> like you watching TV. You be like, mom, uh, okay, that's a good show. All right, let's go to Michael O'Connor. Hey y'all, give us a call three one two three seven four eight one three zero. Tell me something good you are doing. Like I don't want Keith here. Somebody give me. You know what? I'm gonna give you a phone number because I'm gonna call somebody too. What's up, Mike? 
Hey, what's up, fellas? Look, hey. you know what? You had me laughing talking about your mom, but your mom is 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 it has been a long time advocate for a whole lot of different things. So don't get mad at her just because y'all watching TV together. <laughs> I, you know, I love watching TV with my mom. <laughs> right, but don't watch Ninja Turtles because of uh, I was I wasn't gonna call, but I decided I would call because of. Uh, Todd, I'm surprised at your last comment uh, last Friday. I haven't forgot about the, the turtle? Ninja Turtle comment. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't forgot. Okay, I'll be, uh, you know when it's pan- next, I'll be back. But look, I uh, would ask people. I've taken my time to do the mail in for the census count yes. because it's due April first. So all those people that are self content, uh, you know, self self. Uh, 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 contained and that are, uh, you know, quarantine themselves. If you can't do it online, please fill it out and drop it in the mail because that, that's our money. Damn or right. lack thereof. One of the two. All right. So that's what I've been doing. I've been in the house since uh, March 10th. Thanks, Mike. Actually, March 9th. And that's so I have a good one. You, you forgot. And, and that's my comment. You can do my census 2020 uh, online. Okay. I know this one's going to be good. I know this one's going to be good. First of all, Brother Ball, tell the babies I said, what's up? What y'all doing? Tell the kids I said, what's up to Brother Ball's kids? Because I know they running you. They probably got you doing all. You probably doing jumping jack sit-ups. They got you watching TV shows. What you doing, Brother Ball? And we're trying to keep the show clean. So <laughs> yeah, 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 hey, Ty, we finna, we finna muck it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, we... My son just got up surprising me. Hey, man, you got to tell him wake up early. <laughs> I made this joker. Check this out. I made him watch C.J. Walker, Madam C.J. Walker, right? Uh-huh. So I, I was kind of against it. You know, I, I'm kind of like against the Netflix uh, movie kind of deal things. I like watching documentaries. So I had him watching Shark Week and all that, and we was all into it. So here comes C.J. Walker, and we got to sit through three series, and you know, that it's killing him, right? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> So then they found some good parts. They made it through the movie. Man, the funniest part of my my first part of my quarantine weekend was watching my son get emotional because he had to do a book report <laughs> after he watched Madam C. J. Oh, you oh, oh, brother Ball went old school. Brother Ball went old school. <laughs> Remember when these days, man? I'm gonna tell you what. Remember the blizzard of '79. Yes. And everybody had to stay in, and everybody. I thought it was gonna be the bomb because we couldn't go outside. Man, my old man made me do my timetables ten times each, from the zeros to the twelves every day. Now here's another one. Here's <laughs> another good one. In that movie, you know, at the end they give you the subtitles, right? Uh-huh. So I read the first one, and then I made the, the youngest two read. So it went back and forth, back and forth, and whichever words they couldn't pronounce. They had to write the word 25 times. <laughs> yes. Here's the kick. Here's the, so, so look, you know spring break. See, kids are too smart. Do you know my kids say, Dad, what's wrong with you? It's spring break also. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. So now I got to sweeten it up, right? So I had to go to the dollars. I had to go to the dollar stash. I had to peel out $25. Do you know these was, this was the fastest word I have ever seen written <laughs> Correctly and neat. I, 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 I'm so amazed at my children. You know, these teachers been lying on my kids all the time. <laughs> <laughs> brother Ball, brother Ball took it old school. Yeah. Brother Ball, you know what? I would say I used to hate that. I used to want to go to school because my old man would be like, "You had to get up earlier on the days off." I used to be like, "Why? I don't want Saturday and Sunday to come." <laughs> right? I was like, "Can I go to school?" I remember I used to be like when I worked at Burger King. I would be like, if y'all let me work at 5 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays so I have to go to church, I'll do whatever y'all ask me to do. I'll be here. I'm going to tell you, man, Brother Ball went back old school. Like, the kids who was having a good old time, like, nah, come on down here and do this work. That's what's happening. You should give me an article. He said, read this article. We'll talk about it when you're through. And at Reagan, poor Reagan, poor Rago Babo, the Rago Babo got Sister Jean, the teacher. Grandma is teaching grandma to de- She got, you got hard work. You're doing seventh grade work this week. Hey, y'all, it has been a great show. We're going to be back tomorrow. So for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Sonia Escobar, she's my co-host because Ty be coming around here late. For my 
my sometimes co-host, but in the building. Come on, Suki, get this right for me, baby. <laughs> this is the WVON Morning Show, where we ask the question every day. What's in it for the black people? Shout out to states, Attorney General Kwame Raul for being with us this morning. A little different than what y'all thought, huh? I am the host of the WVON Morning Show. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May he said, we out of here. Peace. Live from the WBON newsroom, here's our news now. Okay, so I'm going to say this. I don't believe he scheduled the person to come into the studio on purpose. I think it's it takes people, like, you don't think about it. It's like you just said. Now, I'm saying I thought about it as soon as he did that because I don't want no new people coming into the environment. But I don't think he did. I mean, I just think it was a slip of the mind. Now, if I get corona from it, that would be a whole nother way. <laughs> But I, that's my point about people not taking your life seriously. Like, you can take chances with yourself, right? And I don't really want Frat to feel bad, but I really was like, damn. Like, when somebody tell you to come in the studio, you call them and say, all right, anyway, we out of here.